Good afternoon. This is All India Radio. I'm Anuja Kumar and with me is Tanvi Taneja with the Midday News. The headlines. Election Commission announces the dates for Bihar Assembly polls. Elections to be held in three phases on October 28th, November 3rd and 7th, counting on November 10th. Model Code of Conduct comes into force in Bihar. Prime Minister Narendra Modi interacts with BJP Karikartas on the occasion of birth anniversary of Pandit Deen Dayal Upadhyay. Says new farm bills and labor laws will free farmers and workers from unnecessary laws. Government sanctions 670 electric buses and 241 charging stations to boost the electric mobility. National Medical Commission replacing Medical Council of India comes into existence. Nearly 15 lakh COVID-19 tests conducted in last 24 hours. Around 7 crore tests conducted so far. And legendary playback singer S.P. Balasubramanyam passes away. We begin the bulletin with Bapu Ki Baat on communal harmony. In a post-prayer speech at Sodhpur in West Bengal, he had appealed to the people to maintain communal harmony and stand united. Hindustan is one, and Bhugan is one, and in these years we are one in Hindustan. The assembly elections in Bihar will be held in three phases starting from the 28th of next month. The counting will take place on the 10th of November. Announcing the poll schedule in New Delhi today, Chief Election Commissioner Sunil Arora said the Model Code of Conduct, MCC, has come into effect with the declaration of elections. He said 71 assembly constituencies will go to poll in the first phase on the 28th of October, 94 seats in the second phase on 3rd of November and 78 seats in the third phase on 7th of November. General elections to the Legislative Assembly of Bihar shall be conducted in three phases. In first phase, 71 assembly constituencies in 16 districts, including most of the LWE districts, will go for poll. In second phase, 94 assembly constituencies in 17 districts will go for poll. Third phase, 78 assembly constituencies in 15 districts will go for poll. Briefing the media, the CEC said the term of current assembly will end on November the 29th. You are all aware that the term of assembly in Bihar is due to expire on 29th November. Bihar assembly has a strength of 243 members of whom 38 seats are reserved for SCs and 2 for STs. The Chief Election Commissioner said the number of phases for 243 member Bihar Assembly polls has been reduced, keeping in mind the security arrangements and the festive season. He informed that the voting time has been extended by one hour till 6 p.m. and COVID-19 patients will vote in the last hour of the day. He said COVID-19 pandemic has forced a new normal in all aspects of life and Bihar Assembly elections will be held under new security protocols. The CEC informed that 7 lakh hand sanitizer points, 46 lakh masks, 6 lakh PPE kits, 6.7 lakh face shields, 23 lakh pairs of hand gloves have been arranged in the wake of COVID pandemic. He added that social distancing norms will need to be followed at public gatherings and other activities during the election campaign. The Chief Election Commissioner said the Election Commission has made elaborate arrangements for ensuring the effective implementation of MCC guidelines. He added that anyone who indulges in the misuse of social media with respect to elections will have to face consequences under the law. The Election Commission has informed that it will decide on by polls for one Lok Sabha and 64 assembly seats after review meeting on 29th of September on issues raised by some states on poll timing. Prime Minister Narendra Modi said that the farm bills and labor laws recently passed by Parliament will free the farmers and workers in the country from the cobweb of unnecessary laws. Addressing BJP party workers on the occasion of the birth anniversary of Pandit Deen Dayal Upadhyay, he took a sharp dig at the opposition parties and said that they are misleading the people by spreading blatant lies. किसानों से हमेशा जिन्होंने झूठ बोला है झूठ बोलने वाले कुछ लोग 
इन दिनों अपने राजनीतिक स्वार्थ की वजह से किसानों को भ्रमित करने में लगे हैं ये लोग अफवाहें फैला रहे हैं देश के किसानों को ऐसी किसी भी अफवाह से बचाना कृषि सुधार का महत्व समझाना भारतीय जनता पार्टी के हम सभी कार्यकर्ताओं का बहुत बड़ा कर्तव्य है किसानों की तरह ही हमारे यहाँ दशकों तक देश के श्रमिकों को भी कानून के जाल में उलझा कर रखा गया है चार लेबर कोर्स के माध्यम से देश के श्रमिक साथियों को दर्जनों कानूनों के कुचक्र से बाहर निकालने का प्रयास हमने किया है Prime Minister Modi stressed that the much awaited freedom in the agriculture sector will be achieved by the new farm bills. He said farmers will be able to sell their produce anywhere in the country in addition to the existing mandis. He said 85 out of 100 farmers will be benefited by the new legislations and urged BJP party workers to reach out to the farmers and explain them about the benefits of the new provisions. The Prime Minister underlined the historic reforms which the government has brought to make the agrarian economy strong, mentioning the hike in MSP by one one and a half times and manifold increase in government procurement of agri produce. The Prime Minister informed that the government implemented the long due reforms in the sector. He said more than one lakh crore rupees have been transferred directly into the accounts of farmers to make them independent, highlighting the importance of Kisan Credit Card (KCC). He said that its ambit has been increased to cover even those involved in dairy industry and fisheries. Bajpa Sarkar ke paanch vars mein kisano ko lagbhag 35 lakh crore rupee KCC ke madhyam se diye gaye. Sarkar desh vyapi abhiyan chala kar jada se jada kisano ko KCC se jod rahi hai taaki unhe kisi aur ke paas. कर्ज लेने की मजबूरी से बाहर निकालने के लिए हमने एक अहम काम पूरी ताकत से शुरू किया है इन सभी प्रयासों से देश के किसानों को बहुत बड़ी मदद मिली है द प्राइम मिनिस्टर सेड द लेबरर्स एंड वर्कर्स इन द कंट्री वर्किंग इन डिफरेंट फील्ड्स वर सब्जेक्टेड टू सेपरेट लीगल प्रोविजन विदाउट एनी गारंटी ऑफ पे एंड लीगल राइट He said the historic labor reform codes passed recently by the parliament will bring parity and respect to them and also guarantee legal rights. Enumerating other reforms introduced by the government, the prime minister highlighted the system of disposal of tax returns through the faceless tax computation mechanism and informed that the faceless tax appeal system will further ease the lives of honest taxpayers. Speaking about Pandit Din Dayal Upadhyay, the Prime Minister said his ideas and teachings on politics, economics, and various other fields will keep inspiring generations to come. He said Pandit Din Dayal advocated the idea of Swadeshi even when the previous governments pushed growth models based on foreign drivers. The Prime Minister said that even during COVID pandemic. Party workers have been working without fading efforts to help those affected. He exhorted citizens to follow the guidelines of the health ministry to defeat the global pandemic and asked everyone to continue wearing masks and follow physical distancing. Vice President M Venkaiah Naidu has paid his tributes to Pandit Din Dayal Upadhyay on his birth anniversary today. In a tweet he said Upadhyay was a great leader and a profound thinker whose philosophy of integral humanism and antodaya has been a source of inspiration for all. Home Minister Amit Shah also paid his tributes to Pandit Din Dayal Upadhyay on his birth anniversary. In a tweet Home Minister said that Pandit Din Dayal Upadhyay a pioneer of Indian politics a man of multifaceted personality and founder of jan sang fought throughout his life to protect and preserve indian culture and values with the ideas of integral humanism and antyodaya he worked to give a progressive ideology to the country the home minister added pandit din daya laid the foundation of alternative politics which is at present working to bring the poor and deprived sections of the country into the mainstream of development He said his life is a unique example of social harmony and patriotism. In 2014, Pandit Din Dayal Upadhyay's birth anniversary, the 25th of September, was declared the Antyodaya Divas. 
It was on this day that the Rural Development Ministry revamped its existing skill development program called Ajivika Skills as Deen Dayal Upadhyay Grameen Kaushalya Yojana DDU GKY, which emphasizes on greater access, coverage and quality. In doing so, the ministry used its knowledge gained over 15 years in implementing skill training programs. DDU GKY is now a demand-driven placement-linked skilling initiative which seeks to enable poor youth in rural areas to benefit from national and international employment opportunities. The spirit of Antiyodaya mission lies in reaching out to the last person. Rural Development Ministry is also working towards this motto through reaching to all eligible rural youths of India. Therefore, working towards this motto and to commemorate Antyodaya Divas 2020, the Rural Development Ministry is celebrating this day for Deen Dayal Upadhyay Grameen Kaushalya Yojana, DDU GKY, with their skilled and enthusiastic beneficiaries and other stakeholders spread across the country. During this pandemic time, the ministry is virtually celebrating this day with all states and union territories, project implementing agencies, employers and rural youths from all over the country. President Ramnath Kovind said Dr. Vikram Sarabhai was a world-class scientist, a policy maker and also an institution builder. He added he convened an army of brilliant scientists, anthropologists, communicators and social scientists to spearhead the Indian space program. Addressing the birth centenary program of Dr. Vikram Sarabhai through video conferencing today, the President paid his tribute to Dr. Sarabhai and recalled his contribution in the field of Indian space program. He said for both Dr. Sarabhai and Dr. Bhabha, science was not only an exciting journey in itself but was also a path to modern development for a country like India. Appreciating the vision of Dr. Sarabhai, the President said, Dr. Sarabhai wanted to demonstrate the usefulness of a satellite system for national development. He said, today we realize the significance of his dream when the COVID-19 pandemic has failed to interrupt school education, which has continued in the remote learning mode. The president added, from a humble yet ambitious beginnings, India has reached the stage where preparations are on to launch a human space flight. He said, Mission Gaganyaan, slated for the 75th year of India's independence, speaks of the legacy of Dr. Sarabhai. The government has sanctioned 670 electric buses and 241 charging stations to boost the electric mobility in the country. The buses have been sanctioned in the states of Maharashtra, Goa, Gujarat and Chandigarh, whereas charging stations in Madhya Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Gujarat and Port Blair under phase 2 of Fame India scheme. In a series of tweets, Heavy Industries Minister Prakash Javadekar said that this decision reflects the government's commitment for reducing dependence on fossil fuel and promoting eco-friendly public transportation. Faster adoption and manufacturing of hybrid and electric vehicles in India scheme was launched in 2015 to promote adoption of electric and hybrid vehicles in India. The second phase of this scheme has been implemented from last year with a total budgetary support of 10,000 crore rupees. The National Medical Commission, NMC, in place of the Medical Council of India, MCI, the country's apex regulator of medical education and profession, has come into existence from today. With the NMC coming into existence, the Board of Governors superseded the MCI on September 26, 2018 to perform its functions, has been dissolved and the nearly 64-year-old Indian Medical Council Act abolished. Dr. Suresh Chandra Sharma, former head of the All India Institute of Medical Sciences, ENT Department, Delhi, has been appointed as chairman for a period of three years. The NMC Act, which seeks to usher in mega reforms in the medical education sector, received the assent of the President on August 8th last year. The NMC comprises a chairman, 10 ex-officio members and 22 part-time members. You are listening to the Midday News on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Election Commission announces dates for Bihar Assembly polls. Election to be held in three phases on October 28th, November 3rd and 7th, counting on November 10th. Model Code of Conduct comes into force in Bihar. 
Prime Minister Narendra Modi interacts with BJP Karyakartas on the occasion of birth anniversary of Pandit Deen Dayal Upadhyay, says new farm bills and labor laws will free farmers and workers from unnecessary laws. Government sanctions 670 electric buses and 241 charging stations to boost electric mobility. National Medical Commission replacing Medical Council of India comes into existence. Nearly 15 lakh COVID-19 tests conducted in the last 24 hours. Around 7 crore tests conducted so far. And legendary playback singer S.P. Balasubramaniam passes away. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. All India Radio presents World News. News and views from across the globe. What happened? What is up next? The newsmakers and the highlights of the day. Every day at 10.20 p.m. in the night. On 100.1 FM, All India Radio. The nation achieved another milestone in COVID testing by conducting nearly 15 lakh tests in the last 24 hours. With cumulative testing figure of around 7 crores, India continues to be one of the country across the world conducting highest daily testings. Starting from just one testing lab at National Institute of Virology, Pune, in January this year, the country today has 1,818 labs for testing COVID samples. Average daily testing has witnessed an increase by nearly four times in a span of two months. It stands at around 12 lakh tests in the recent weeks. With the expansion of testing infrastructure, the daily testing by states and union territories has also increased. 23 states and UTs have recorded higher tests per million than the national average. Despite increase in testing, the positivity rate remains low and currently hovers around 8.4%. Bihar, Gujarat, Uttar Pradesh, Manipur, Jharkhand and Telangana are among the states recording a positivity rate even lower than 5%. The country is registering a continuous increase in the number of patients recovered from COVID-19. With the recovery of over 81,000 people in the last 24 hours, the total tally of recovery has crossed over 47,56,000. The overall recovery rate has now reached 81.74%. The Health Ministry has said the gap between recovered cases and active cases is progressively growing wide. Actual caseload of the country currently comprises only 16.67% of the total positive cases. The number of recovered patients has overtaken the active cases by nearly five times. Unprecedented surge in COVID recoveries with more than 100% increase in patients recovered and discharged in the last one month has also been reported. The Health Ministry has informed that the sustained high recovery rate is fueled by nine states and union territories, reporting recovery rate of over 80%. These states include Bihar, Tamil Nadu, West Bengal, Rajasthan and Gujarat, among others. The Ministry has informed that aggressive measures for early identification, prompt and effective treatment and enhanced clinical skills of ICU doctors have led to a progressive enhancement of India's total recoveries. Currently, India's case fatality rate stands at 1.59%. India has progressively maintained a low case fatality rate compared to the global average. In the last 24 hours, 86,052 new cases have been reported, taking the total number of positive cases to 58,18,571. Presently, the total number of active corona cases in the country is 9,70,116. In the last 24 hours, 1,141 deaths have been reported, taking the toll to 92,290. The Health Ministry has said that 75% of new COVID-19 cases in the country are concentrated in 10 states and union territories. In a tweet, the Ministry said that the 10 states and union territories also account for 74% of new recoveries. It said Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh and Karnataka are among these which are reporting higher number of recoveries and new cases as well. The Ministry said that the central government is proactively extending technical, financial, material and other resources to all states and union territories to strengthen their capacities and sustain their efforts. Legendary playback singer S.P. Balasubramaniam passed away this afternoon in Chennai. He was 74. His son, S.P. Charan, confirmed his demise to the reporters this afternoon. 
Renowned artist S.P. Balasubramanyam was admitted into a corporate hospital in the city on the 5th of this month for COVID-19. The viral load dissipated only after leaving his vital organs severely affected. It led him to be put on a ventilator and ECMO support. He breathed his last at 1.04 p.m. A tribute to the legendary singer. The veteran playback singer S.P. Balasubramaniam holds the Guinness World Record of singing the highest number of songs by a single artist. He has rendered more than 40,000 songs in 16 Indian languages, including Tamil, Telugu, Hindi, Kannada and Malayalam. He has the unenvious record of winning the National Film Award for the Best Male Playback Singer six times, besides many other awards by different state governments and the Filmfare Awards. He was honored with the Silver Peacock and the title The Indian Indian Film Personality of the Year in 2016. The Union Government honoured him with the Padma Shri and Padma Bhushan Awards. S.P. Balasubramaniam has sung for many generations of film stars since making his debut in the film world in late 1966. This celebrated singer is no more. But his mesmerizing voice that breathed life into thousands of songs will continue to ring in the ears of music lovers. समझे थे बात इतनी सी आप शीशे थे दुनिया पत्थर की हम न समझे थे बात इतनी सी Telangana Chief Minister K Chandrasekhar Rao has expressed shock and grief over the demise of the eminent singer and film actor SP Balasubramaniam In a statement the chief minister said demise of SPB is an irreparable loss for the film fraternity he felt it was unfortunate that the bestest of the best efforts by doctors could not save him Andhra Pradesh governor Sri Viswabhushan Harichandan also expressed profound grief and sadness at the demise of SP Balasubramaniam Telangana state government has resumed city bus operations in a phased manner in Hyderabad today. The interstate bus services to Karnataka and Maharashtra also will be resumed from today. State Transport Minister P. Ajay Kumar announced this after a meeting with Chief Minister Chandrasekhar Rao last evening in Hyderabad. Initially, 25% of about 3200 city buses of the Telangana State Road Transport Corporation will be operated with all the precautions to prevent spread of COVID-19. About 700 city buses of the state-run corporation will be hitting the roads today after about six months. Maharashtra government has put a cap of 5,500 rupees for convalescent plasma therapy treatment. The move comes after it has been reported that many hospitals and blood banks are charging hefty sums for the plasma therapy treatment. Health Minister Rajesh Tope said nucleic acid testing (NAT) or chameleon essence test is conducted prior to the therapy. Then hospitals can charge 1,200 and 500 rupees per test, respectively. Activities for promoting the yoga break protocol have been started from today, which was suspended after the onset of COVID-19 pandemic. This five-minute protocol encourages people to practice yoga at the workplace. The Ministry of Ayush, in association with Muradji Desai National Institute of Yoga, has developed a five-minute yoga break protocol to de-stress, refresh, and refocus the workers at the workplace. This protocol has been designed by a group of eminent yoga experts, wherein several yoga practices have been demonstrated. In view of the current health emergency situation due to COVID-19, additional emphasis was given on breathing exercises for increasing the lungs' capacity. The government today clarified that the Pradhan Mantri Suraksha Bima Yojana (PMSBY) doesn't cover COVID-19 related deaths. In a tweet, the Press Information Bureau, however, said Pradhan Mantri Jeevan Jyoti Bima Yojana (PMJJBY) covers COVID deaths with certain conditions. The clarification came in the wake of claims on social media that the kin of those who died of COVID-19 can claim insurance under PMJJBY and PMSBY. 
West Bengal Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee has announced a grant of 50,000 rupees to each Durga Puja committee in the state, announcing a slew of doles for around 37,000 Durga Puja committees in the state yesterday. Ms. Banerjee said that the Fire Brigade, Kolkata Municipal Corporation KMC, other civic bodies, municipalities and panchayats will not charge any money or tax for their services from the puja organizers. Addressing the Durga Puja coordination meeting, she said, it has also been decided that CESC and the State Electricity Board will give 50% waiver for the puja committees. The Kolkata Port Trust, rechristened as the Syama Prasad Mukherjee Port, is investing on digital technologies and has lined up at least 40 crore rupees for various projects to bolster ease of doing business. The Port Trust Chairman Vineet Kumar said the Port Authorities are undertaking an ambitious project to develop an integrated e-marketplace to facilitate coastal shipping. The water level in the Stanley Reservoir at Mittur in Tamil Nadu has reached 100 feet this noon. This is the 66th time the level has risen above 100 feet since its inception against its full reservoir level of 120 feet. The water inflow into the biggest dam in the state remains 35,000 cusacks as it is raining in the catchment areas of the river Kaveri. The outflow from the dam is being kept at 20,000 cusacks to irrigate the farmlands in the Delta region. In Jammu and Kashmir, two lashkar e taiba LUT terrorists were killed in an encounter which lasted overnight with security forces in South Kashmir's Anantanag district today. Police sources said that based on specific intelligence input about the presence of terrorists in the area, security forces launched a cordon and search operation in Sirhama village last evening. The search operation turned into an encounter after the terrorists fired upon the security forces who retaliated. In IPL cricket today, Delhi Capitals will take on Chennai Super Kings at Dubai International Stadium. Last night, KL Rahul's blistering century against Royal Challengers Bangalore, RCB, cruised Kings 11 Punjab to a 97-run win. Rahul played an unbeaten knock of 132 runs off just 69 balls and then bowlers bundled out RCB on just 109 runs. Ravi Bishnoi and Murugan Nashwin took three wickets each in the match. Punjab skipper KL Rahul was named the man of the match. Chasing a massive target of 207 runs, RCB were all out for 109 runs in 17 overs. Now let us take a look at the weather update for the day. The national capital Delhi will see a partly cloudy sky. The minimum temperature was recorded at 26 degrees Celsius and maximum is expected to be around 37 degrees. In Mumbai, there will be a generally cloudy sky with moderate rain. The minimum temperature was 25 and the maximum will be around 32. Chennai will see a generally cloudy sky. The temperature is likely to hover between 27 and 37 degrees Celsius. Kolkata will see a generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. The minimum temperature in the metropolis was 28, while the maximum is expected to be around 31. In the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir, the minimum temperature was 23 in Jammu, while the maximum will be around 36. The city is likely to see a mainly clear sky. In Srinagar, the minimum temperature was around 11, while the maximum will be 29 degrees. The city will see a mainly clear sky becoming partly cloudy towards afternoon or evening. Ladakh will see a clear sky. The temperature is likely to hover between 8 and 24. In Gilgit, the temperature is likely to hover between 9 and 33. It will see a mainly clear sky becoming partly cloudy towards afternoon or evening. Muzaffarabad will see a mainly clear sky. The temperature is likely to hover between 16 and 35 degrees Celsius. We leave you with Bapu's favorite bhajan, Vaishnav Janto, sung by an artist from Russia. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Election Commission announces dates for Bihar Assembly polls. Elections to be held in three phases on October 28th, November 3rd and 7th, counting on November 10th. Model Code of Conduct comes into force in Bihar. 
Prime Minister Narendra Modi interacts with BJP Karyakartas on the occasion of birth anniversary of Pandit Deen Dayal Upadhyay. Says new farm bills and labor laws will free farmers and workers from unnecessary laws. Government sanctions 670 electric buses and 241 charging stations to boost electric mobility. National Medical Commission replacing Medical Council of India comes into existence. Nearly 15 lakh COVID-19 tests conducted in last 24 hours, around 7 crore tests conducted so far. And legendary playback singer S.P. Balasubramaniam passes away. And with that, we end the Midday News.